Buffalo here today to take a look at our SUV sport utility van. It's an ongoing project as well as a work vehicle for the shop that we've been doing things to for years and just thought it was time I got around to posting a, a video of the various things we've done to it because some of it's kind of interesting, some of it's probably stupid and I don't necessarily think anyone's going to copy it, but might be some uh, interesting stuff for everyone. First of all, no, it's not pretty. It's not pretty outside, it's not pretty inside. It really is a work vehicle and a play vehicle, but it's meant to be functional. I love all the videos on the live-in vans, the conversion vans. would love to do one someday, and that is not what this is. There's no fancy wood trim, there's no porta potty in fact, there's no sleeping arrangements. It's not intended for that. It's intended to be a work van and a van for mountain biking, motorcycle racing, snowboarding. It's an all-wheel drive version, so we take it to Mammoth, we take it virtually anywhere. And it, primarily, it has to be a useful work vehicle for our business. And that means throwing a bunch of speakers, amps, tools, etc., in the back and taking it down to an off-site job, a yacht, whatever, and uh, you know, still being able to park in a normal parking spot. Also build a lot of custom boxes, etc. So being able to haul back four by eight sheets of medium density fiberboard, MDF, or anything else is is very useful to us. It does have air you can see the air fittings down there it has led lights both front and rear for working thousand watt true sine wave inverter for powering tools as well as charging the battery packs A little tool pouch there with miscellaneous tools and fan water etc so that you know, we always have the bare minimum with us One thing it isn't is a show vehicle. It is not pretty. It's not in great shape. A lot of stuff doesn't match. A lot of the wiring, actually a lot of the uh, equipment in this vehicle has been changed multiple times. So it's an experimental vehicle. It's where we can try new equipment. I think the, uh, I think the stereo has been changed five or six times, maybe more. The speakers have been changed multiple times. Used to have a 12-inch sub on both sides. So that one used to be mirrored over here. Well, didn't decided didn't really need two 12-inch subs, so now that's what holds the battery and the electronics inside of that enclosure. So not a neat vehicle. It's just very functional for what we do with it. The current iteration of the stereo is just a Kenwood Android Auto Apple CarPlay head unit. It's got a set of components on each door and as you can see in the lower right hand corner there a separate 6 inch mid base driver. In the back of the front seats next to the rear seats which can go in and we do do that for trips where we're looking to take more than two people but there's uh, two more speakers in the back and let's see if we can pull out the amplifier board here Just show you the amp setup so we've got three amplifiers two four channels and one sub amplifier powers the six front speakers, these two speakers, the sub, and then if you look in the back doors, there's a set of six and a half inch drivers in the rear doors as well. Those are controlled with a separate volume control from up front, so in normal operation I actually have those shut off. But if you're tailgating, getting ready for mountain biking, skiing, eating lunch on the side of a hill, whatever, you can turn those up and turn the front speakers down a little bit and give a little bit of a tailgating environment. Speaking of tailgating, we've got a nice little LCD TV that uh, can be 
it's got its own DVD player and it can be swung out to uh, push forward to the seats up front or swung around for hanging out and watching something in the back. Got it hooked up to just a uh, HD antenna in the window, but it's also got a DVD player and it's capable of streaming from your phone so you can watch movies from the phone. So kind of nice little feature that tucks in out of the way there. Kind of a slick feature of the um, electrical system is that I have it wired such that pretty much everything, lights, stereo, etc., can work with the, uh, with the car on, off the main battery, or off the lithium battery in the back. And even though it's isolated, when the car is on and the engine is running, the front alternator, 200 amp, alternator can partially charge the lithium batteries as well as the solar so when you're tailgating or hanging out or whatever you don't want to turn the engine on you can turn the stereo and all the USB chargers and all the electrical system and the lights on and now it's running off of the lithium battery in the back even with the let's see what do we got in here about 2800 watts of power it doesn't use that unless you're really jamming um, with the 200 watts of solar and the 100 amp hours of batteries, uh, you can really play the stereo indefinitely unless you're really playing super loud. The van's got plenty of lighting options. LED accent lights all around the inside of the van. Obviously not doing much during the daytime, but uh, a nice amount of light for hanging out at night. Adjustable color, of course already mentioned i think the uh led lights in the rear really lights out the rear of the vehicle and you know makes loading and unloading at night a lot easier coupled with the leds in the in the hatch like i said makes uh loading and unloading at night easier and if that sounds like uh something you might not be concerned about uh <laughs> I broke my toe unloading my race bike at the racetrack at 10 o'clock at night this summer, so I kind of decided that having adequate lighting in the back of the van is uh, essential. In the front of the vehicle, we've got LED high beams and low beams, and as you can see in the middle behind the grill, we got some LED spotlight. Again, not, made, not meant to light up the forest or anything, just really nice and really bright cruising up to Mammoth or somewhere else in the middle of nowhere. You turn on the lights and it really lights up the road nicely. I mentioned that the truck has an air system on it. It's got a five gallon air tank and not quite adequate air pump. It might be something I need to change at some time, but you can raise and lower the suspension and it shows on the bottom there the uh, pressure in the suspension turn on the air compressor and fill the main tank and the top one is the pressure in the main tank kind of goes pretty slow but it does what it needs to do and allows me to adjust ride height and air pressure for various loads so I put the motorcycle in and I can adjust it or put two motorcycles in and we can adjust it really nice five gallon tank you got a uh, connector here so you can you got a hose up in the storage there so you can fill tires from there or run yeah, a small air tool maybe for a little while and then over here we got a fitting for filling the tank nice little system not sure I would have gone quite as far a set of air shocks probably would have been acceptable but uh, eh, it turned out nice one of uh, my Favorite things to do with utility vehicles is full seven inch screen electronic rear view mirror. So it's basically like a backup camera except it's on all the time. It can be shut off, so push a button and it'll shut off. And even when it's shut off, it'll still turn back on when you put the car in reverse. So it'll still work just like a regular backup camera. The nice thing about it is cruising down the highway or whatever, you've got 
the best rear view mirror you could ever imagine. 170 degrees of view. They're coupled with the side view mirrors. There are no blind spots. Also have front and rear dash cams monitoring the surroundings at all time. Another necessity I feel for vehicles nowadays. Someone cuts you off and you know exactly what happened. Or someone tries to burglarize the vehicle. It does have an alarm system but this way it also records someone when they're walking in front or behind. And speaking of which it's got a full remote start alarm system. Have a total of eight USB quick charge 3.0 chargers in the vehicle. In the rear we've got a vent fan, forward and reverse, closable top. It really does come in nice on warm days. You turn that on and open the windows a little bit and it pulls some air through when you're just sitting in the parking lot. Again, coupled with the overkill solar system, you can run the fan, radio and everything pretty much forever. We did some custom modifications to the top of the fan unit so that it wouldn't sit any higher than the rails of the vehicle. Again, being able to use the vehicle on a daily basis. I can go in and out of any parking structure anywhere, which kind of brings us to the solar part of it. Two flexible 100 watt solar panels. Not sure I would do flexible ever again. The first two I got from one company, they were just junk. They were absolute junk. These have seemed to be good, but I've already had one go bad in six months. The uh, company did uh, replace the unit, no questions asked, so great customer service there. But, you know, no knock against them. I just, uh, I'm not real sold on the uh, flexible concept. And I have these mounted nicely, isolated on rubber grommets, screwed through to riv nuts in the ceiling of the van, so, you know, they're properly mounted. It's just not as robust of a technology as a true uh, rigid glass solar panels. So far I've been through three solar charge controllers as well as three BMS's for the uh, lithium cells and I'm definitely learning what works and, and what doesn't work. So far I haven't had this Renogy unit for too long but it, it seems pretty slick. It seems to work well. It really tells you what you need to know without a whole lot of extra expense and it sits nicely flush mounted so kind of impressed with that unit so far. Have four 3.2 volt nominal value lithium ion phosphate cells in the uh, enclosure in here. DALI 4S BMS 100 amp so that controls the input and the output and hopefully prevents the engine from drawing too much from these batteries or vice versa. Like I said before, you've got uh, the ability to power virtually everything up in the vehicle, either by the vehicle or by the lithium battery in the back. Of course, it's wired into the inverter. True sine wave, 1000 watt. Haven't used it a whole lot yet, but every time I have, it's, uh, it's, it's worked really well and powers pretty much every electric tool that I've thrown at it. And the initial hope was that I'd be able to run motorcycle tire warmers for the track off the inverter and batteries, but even though technically I should be able to do that for an hour or two, eh, or three or four with the solar going strong, the more I read, the more I realized that's not worth doing. Find a plug and plug in. Driver's seat is conventional, just uh, slide back and forth, but the passenger seat did a custom swivel so it can be rotated front and rear. Just kind of nice for hanging out, put a little table in, in there and uh, my girlfriend can uh, work on her laptop that she's plugged into the inverter and watch some TV while I'm out doing my thing on the track. Kind of just a nice little addition. Decent amount of work though because the Astro Van seat rails did not have the right holes or patterns in any way for the swivel mechanism that I used. I'll put a link down below for that. But uh, really nice mechanism. I, I really like it. But these seat rails were just not perfect. So I basically sliced them in two and welded brackets on to uh, attach the swivel mechanism. 
worked out worked out well in the end very sturdy like i said i highly recommend this mechanism it's not expensive can't imagine why you'd you'd want more if it fits your seats so there you have it our sport utility van it's a work in progress i'm sure many modifications will be made as we go along but it's very useful for both a work vehicle and a fun vehicle. I can't count the number of trips it's been on. It will fit a motorcycle, many mountain bikes. I've had four inside with luggage, two with the rear seats and luggage, four by eight sheets of plywood, the rear seats and an almost unlimited amount of snowboarding gear, snowboards, skis, etc. At one point we had eight people and all their gear just to get to the slopes from the condo. So again, very useful vehicle. I hope you appreciated something that you saw here. And if you're with me this far and you liked it, please subscribe. Thank you very much.